This episode is sponsored by How to Talk to Your Kids About Alcohol. This is the most important course I have ever offered. The conversation about alcohol can be deep and difficult, and it can be a hard one to have with your kids. But this course transforms how you talk to your kids, your parenting, your journey, and it can help you create a relationship with your kids that's built on trust and respect and authenticity. In just a few hours, you'll learn how to talk to your kids about alcohol, and most importantly, how to keep them talking. How to Talk to Your Kids About Alcohol teaches you the biggest mistakes to avoid when it comes to your children and drinking. How to create relationships that are based on mutual trust, mutual respect, and openness. And what I wish I would have known as a kid before my first drink. And so much more. Please don't wait. Go to TalkToYourKidsAboutAlcohol.com to learn more and enroll. Hi, this is Annie Grace, and I am answering readers' questions. And the question I have today is like, how does alcohol affect our hormones. So this is such a great question. And alcohol has like, as you would imagine, because the impact of alcohol on the body in general is just massive. And it's interesting. My son was asking me recently, he's like, mom, why don't people drink hand sanitizer? And I was like, well, that's a good question. Uh, because the type of alcohol in hand sanitizer, A, is different, slightly different. It's a different type of alcohol. It's much, you know, it's even more harmful the type of alcohol that we drink is actually ethanol. And that's the type of alcohol. I think the type of alcohol in hand sanitizer is isopropyl alcohol. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about that, but it's a different type of alcohol. Ethanol is the only one that allows us to even drink it. Although in very, very little doses, it would kill us. Um, but you can't even drink those other kinds. You throw it up immediately because they're, you know, mouthwash stuff like that. It's just not the same. Uh, your body can't even process it. It's that toxic, but ethanol, we can actually process, although it's still wildly toxic. So it affects so many parts of the body and especially, um, the endocrine system, of course, your hormonal system is a really, really big impact. So, what the endocrine system does is it really helps that all your organs and parts of your body and pieces of your body um, communicate and maintain more or less homeostasis. So stay in balance, right? Uh, so if, if something's out of whack, you might have weight gain or hair loss or different things that are symptoms to say like your system is out of balance and it like allows your body to respond to what's going on by releasing different levels of hormones. And so the endocrine system, one function, of course, is to help your body maintain homeostasis and alcohol kicks your body out of homeostasis. In fact, your entire body has to start doing things that are not to, you know, create well-being and health, but are actually just like survival mode once you start drinking alcohol. Because as soon as you start to drink alcohol, your body's job one is to purge the alcohol from your body. Like that's job one. And so it will stop doing things. Like it will stop regulating your blood sugar. As an example, it will stop digesting food as another example, which is why you can have a huge dinner, then drink a lot and then be starving at three in the morning and wonder why you're starving. Well, it's because none of the food you ate before is actually digested um, because your body was so busy trying to just purge the alcohol. And so, you know, consumption of large amounts of alcohol disrupts the communication between the systems in your body. So it disrupts the communication between like your nervous system and your endocrine system and your immune system. And it can cause all sorts of hormonal disturbances that, you know, have really serious consequences, both physiological consequences, emotional consequences, behavioral consequences, all sorts of stuff. So, Hormones play a, such a big role in our emotions. I have two sons right now who are just about one's 14, one's 11, and they're just starting to go through, you know, the changes that hormones wreak on the body. And, you know, they're like, oh, I hate mood swings. And I'm like, wow, isn't it cool that we're having the level of conversations to where you can even understand that what you're going through is a mood swing, right? Like, I just remember feeling like just everything was horrible. I could not even take, like, I didn't even have the knowledge or the awareness to say, oh, my body's going through something. Therefore the emotion I feel might not be because everything's horrible. It just might be a reaction to the hormones that are changing inside my body. So I'm so thankful that they have that knowledge and awareness now, which is great. But so much of like why we might think our world or our life is horrible is because we are drinking something that's causing a hormonal release that has us feel terrible. You know, you've probably heard it said before that drinking alcohol is like put, pouring 
you know, gasoline, which is ethanol is in gasoline, by the way, on your anxiety. A lot of that is, is hormonal, you know, hormonal disturbances that are caused by alcohol induced hormonal dysregulations, and they can affect the entire body, you know, stress abnormalities, you can have re reproductive issues, um, growth issues, uh, you you can disrupt your growing, especially if you're drinking as a child, thyroid problems and everything that comes with thyroid problems, um, immune dysfunction. One of the reasons that it was so tragic in some ways that so many people started drinking more during COVID was because of the effect of alcohol on the immune system. And I'm sure we'll never know. I don't think this will ever be studied, but how interesting is it? Like how much of a, of a cause of death was alcohol? Like if people hadn't been drinking or their immune systems had been functioning in a different or better way because they weren't drinking, would they have been able to not succumb to certain diseases? And I think that's that's true well beyond COVID. But, you know, immune dysfunction, obviously cancer, bone disease, psychological, behavioral disorders, so much is tied into your endocrine system, to your hormonal system. And so there's just, um, there's such intense, intense functions. Now, if we're going to go very specifically to the female reproductive system, which is also very interesting, uh, alcohol has numerous negative consequences. And, and the studies say, quote, mild to moderate alcohol use has numerous negative consequences for the female reproductive function. And I want to read that again, because I want you to hear mild to moderate alcohol use has numerous negative, mild to moderate not saying extreme, we're not saying chronic, we're saying mild to moderate. And in animal studies, they have been shown that alcohol disrupts female puberty. Drinking um, during, during puberty can affect growth, bone health, and then beyond puberty, it disrupts normal menstrual cycle in females and actually can affect hormonal levels in postmenopausal women as well. And so all of these have lots of effects on bone health. They have effects on being able to, to get pregnant. They have detrimental effects on the reproductive system, uh, all sorts of things. So again, I'm just going to read that and I will link all the, you know, there's tons of studies on this. You can go my favorite. And I always encourage everybody to do your own research, like go further than I've gone. Right. Uh, but my favorite is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a great um source for where you can find studies and you can sort those studies by like how recent they are, how, what, and I think recent is, is generally good. Some things haven't changed. Some things change all the time. So, you know, recent studies, and I will link all the studies that I have been using for this specific reader's question in the notes, but know that you can go and do this just research alcohol's effect on the endocrine system, alcohol's effect on hormones, alcohol's effect on, you know, the, the female reproductive system, even the male reproductive system. There was some studies and I don't have them in front of me, so they won't be linked, but that actually the inability to, well, we know for sure that, you know, erectile dysfunction and alcohol are highly correlated, but even the ability to have babies or even to cause birth defects the man who was drinking alcohol before the sperm was given to the woman for the baby to get born actually carried the defect. All right. So like there is, there's a lot of research to say that like, anyway, it's just, it's just, it's just poison. <laughs> and I laugh because it's like so blatantly out there and it's the only drug on earth that you have to justify not taking, but it's still just poison. Still just poison. All right. So anyway, Yes, alcohol can impair the, um, the hormonal system very, very intensely. Again, just as a summary, growth and development, blood pressure, bone mass, emotional, that's a huge one, uh, you know, and then of course the knock-on effects into our immune system and into how much energy we have. Interestingly, your endocrine system really does regulate your energetic levels. A lot of your hormones have to do that. That's why, you know, symptoms of, of different thyroid diseases are exhaustion. And of course, alcohol impacts all of that. And the obvious one, but reproduction. Um, so very deep, very deep uh, correlation between a lot of negative symptoms that come from disruption of hormonal and disruption of the endocrine system from alcohol. So kind of a depressing question, 
but a great question and I'm happy to answer it. And yeah, keep them coming. I love, I love answering readers' questions. Wouldn't it be great if our children never had to go through the pain and challenges that we faced in our own relationships with alcohol? That's my greatest wish for my own kids, and it's why I created the most important course that I've ever offered, How to Talk to Your Kids About Alcohol. Now, even if you've struggled with alcohol and you're not sure what to talk to your kids about it, or if you want to create a relationship with your children that's based on mutual respect, mutual trust, and open communication, if you know that this conversation might be one of the most important you'll have with your kids and it just can't wait any longer, then this course is for you. It includes lifetime access to six video modules, a bonus recorded Q&A session where I answer questions from parents live, just like you, an interactive workbook, and our private and exclusive How to Talk to Your Kids About Alcohol online community community where you can connect with others who are also navigating this important conversation. Visit talktoyourkidsaboutalcohol.com to learn more and enroll today. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today. Mm-hmm.